Good morning and welcome to Madeira. If you're new around here, hi, I'm Caroline and I'm traveling around this beautiful island for two weeks with my other half, Andy. And for today, we have been joined once again by our friend Els. And we also made a new friend last night, Grivilla, who will also be joining us on this gorgeous hike out on the peninsula of the Ponte de São Lorenco. Wow, the first impressions of this place is that it is completely different to the rest of Madeira Island. The whole of it has just been so lush and green and here like all of the grasses are completely dead. I think that it can be a little bit more green in the winter times when there's been a bit more rains. But one of the reasons why the vegetation is so low and there haven't really been much in the way of trees or bushes growing here is that it suffers quite badly from the northerly winds and that just stifles the growth of most plants. This seems to be a very popular and busy trail, but thankfully the Madeira government have sorted out ample parking spaces, so it wasn't difficult to get parked up at about nine o'clock in the morning. We've also seen signs saying that this area can sometimes have the very rare monk seals sighted, and we have just seen a rib boat go past, which is designed for things like whale, dolphin, and seal spotting. So we're really keeping our fingers crossed that maybe as we're hiking out along this path, we'll be able to see some of these rare monk seals. I did notice at the trailhead that there was a sign saying not to start building any kind of rock cairns, but I have noticed the huge kind of rock cairns that we come across in the UK in the likes of the Lake District and Peak District, where it gets super foggy, which makes me wonder, is this not actually too bad of a weather day? And can you actually come out hiking here at some points in the year where it's completely shrouded in fog and you need those super big cairns in order to know where the path is? And is it maybe that we're being told not to build our own so that we don't confuse people by sending them off in the wrong direction? It's definitely not like a Levada walk that's nice and flat, but I have to say that the ups and downs are nothing even close to the ups and downs of the Pico do Arriero to the Pico do Rivo hike. It's a lot more gentle. <laughs> The peninsula is nine kilometers in length, but the hiking trail only takes you three kilometers out. It's supposed to take you to what's known as a sardine house. And I don't know any more at the moment about it, but I'm assuming that it's the building with the palm trees around it in the distance. I'm hoping that when we get there, there will be a little bit more information such as on an information plaque. The peninsula does stretch out as far as a lighthouse right on the very end, but unfortunately these are made up of islands, which means that on foot we can't pass through them. But looking down, we've seen a lot of boat trips and also a kayaking group too. So I suppose if you are wanting to explore those islands further out, there are ways to be able to do it, but just out at sea. With this walk being out along a peninsula, I had wondered if it might have just been a little bit samey, but because it twists and it turns and it pushes you out into little bays and you've got viewpoints like this one that we're getting to, it's actually very, very different uh, the further along the path that you go. We've reached the point in the trail where the campsite is. As we were entering onto the trail, we saw quite a lot of people walking in the opposite direction from us with really large backpacks, big enough to house things like tents, sleeping bags, and sleeping mats. We've got a feeling that everyone's taken down their tents now and they've all headed away, but it's a nice flat pitch behind us. And there seems to be quite a few picnic benches around here too. I imagine that on a slightly less cloudy day when you've got an epic sunrise here against the red rocks, this is probably an amazing place to wake up early and just open up your tent and have a gorgeous sunrise view. I've just been informed that it's 11 o'clock in the morning. Time is absolutely flying by on this hike. So we're just stopping for a quick 11Zs. I've got a sort of rice cake that had got some perfectly spread across orange flavoured yogurt. 
but it's really really melted in the heat over the last few days of hiking and whatnot so it doesn't really look that appetizing but it's just going to be helpful to get us through the next part of this hike until we stop for lunch We have sustenance in ourselves now to keep on going on this walk. We had, as we wandered down to this point, been discussing how do they get all of the food and drink to the cafe. And some of us have been wondering if maybe people hike with it. And we were also saying that maybe boats would bring it out, but we weren't 100% certain if the cliffs were too tall to be able to then get it from a boat up here. But where we stopped off for our snack, there was a winch going right down to the water where some people are using like a little platform to sunbathe off of. And we would assume that they transfer the goods from the boats into the little crate on the winch it gets winched up and then they ha only have to walk it a slight further distance. We got to the end of the three kilometers which is where the sardine house is and then there was very clear ropeway to say look if you're going to keep on walking please walk in between these two ropes there's also a sign at the entrance of that saying no climbing which says to me that they're more than happy with us walking on the trail they just don't want us clambering up any rocks and as we're walking up this the pathway seems really obvious it says to me that even though it's not all marked on the map that you can go further out than the three kilometers you must be allowed to because in addition to everything else that is telling me that we're allowed to, I can probably count about 50 people ahead of me too. That felt like a very short but very steep climb through what almost was like gale force winds and we've managed to get to a point where there's just this little mound right before the peak and the winds have completely stopped and i suppose it's just because it's giving me ultimate protection but already you can start to see new views once again just because we've made that bit more effort to keep on going on the trail so andy and Els, who can tell me a fascinating fact about that lighthouse oh uh, it used to be powered by olive oil, believe it or not. Yeah. And that is a true fact. Um, what else? Have you got anything else? Um, then it was powered by petrol. Petrol. And, and now it's solar power. And now it's solar power? It could be wind power, that would yeah. be better because it's very windy here. The climb up the hill has made us work up quite the appetite, so we've come along to the House of Sardines and brought along our own sandwiches from the break room next door to the hostel. We have, in fairness, just picked up a couple of coffees as well for a bit of a caffeine boost. And the view, as always, spectacular. And as always, we're eating ham and cheese. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> As we've been eating lunch, the sun is desperately trying to break through the clouds. It is most certainly heated up and you've just seen all of the lizards come out because they're obviously feeling it too. So we think that now is probably an excellent opportunity to go back down to where we had our 11 Zs because we could see a few places where there were ladders going into the water and I think some of us might go for a quick dip. <laughs> At a spot like this, I don't think I ordinarily would have wanted to have gone in the water because I think I'd have just been a little bit intimidated by all of like the rocks and the swells. But Els, who we're with, is really into her open water swimming. And she said that back during COVID in the spring, she started swimming and she went all through the summer and just kept on going through the autumn and winter. And so she's like super experienced with it. And she's been really good in like looking down and saying, this is where I'll probably enter in. And then what I'll do is I'll swim around and there's a ladder to be able to exit and so she's like really thought through the health and safety of things and I've watched her go out and around and it's just giving me a little bit of the confidence to say you know what I think I am actually going to go in the water and I think this is just one of the really wonderful things about meeting other people when you're traveling because it then gives you the confidence to join in with things that are maybe their skill set when it's not your own so 
I'm going to do this. <laughs> So that was a lot of fun. I think we were in there for about 45 minutes in total. And just as we were about to get out, we could like see all of these crabs crawling up the sea cliffs. We thought that they were gonna start having a fight, but then they just kind of mellowed. And we also saw one of the whale dolphin watching boats like just stop around this rock and we were like oh have they seen one of the monk seals so we went swimming out but I think actually just around the other side of this rock is where the boat docks up um Els gave me some really sage advice about getting in because it was really shallow in that rock pool and she was like keep your legs under you and being the rebel that I was I was like oh no the natural thing is for me to start swimming and unfortunately I've got a huge almost cut but it's not a bleeding cut across the top of my thigh and I've also managed to cut the top of my foot and a bit on my toe as well you know it's that whole thing of you can lead a horse to water but you can't make it drink and Al gave me the advice but I did not take it on board After the whole debate about how the food and drink gets brought into that cafe, we then start to wonder about how the staff get there. So we ended up asking our waiter and he said that normally nine times out of ten they will get a boat in and it's only if the seas are too choppy do they have to walk. And he said if it's too choppy and it's raining then they just don't come in at all and the cafe is then shut. We've now kind of wrapped up, we've done a hike, we've done a wild swim and we're going to start heading back to the car now. So given that it's now out there and then back walk, well, I'm going to wrap this up now. I'm hoping that you've enjoyed this video. If you have, I'd be ever so grateful if you guys could just give that a thumbs up because it will really help the video spread to others. And we will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.